Welcome back to Big Dan's Air Guns Review Channel. Today, as promised on our last video, we're going to be taking a look at the Cometa Fenix 400 rifle, the rifle that used to be the flagship of Cometa's spring gun lineup. However, because there are so many different variations of this gun, it wouldn't have been fair to just review the one of them. So as you can see, sitting below the full length Cometa 400 is the 400 Ultra Short Carbine, an all new model of the Cometa 400. As always, we're going to go through the features of these rifles, talk about the way they handle, and then we're going to see how they perform downrange. So far, Cometa have got a two for two when it comes to reviews on here, when it comes to putting a smile on my face. So let's see if these two can do the same thing. So let's move on and talk about the features of each of these rifles. So with features, we are going to start off at the rear of the rifle as we always do. We will do both rifles at the same time because let's be fair, when we review one rifle on, on this channel, it usually takes about a year off your life. We don't want to stretch that to two, so we're going to be as quick but as in-depth as we possibly can. Starting off at the rear, you can see both have a nicely finished rubber recoil pad. Both rifles, they do have Monte Carlo style cheek pieces, but they're pretty forgiving. So this could definitely be used by a left-handed shooter as well, so I'm sure our lefties would be happy out there. Both guns have got a nice amount of checkering, again we'll talk more about that when we get to the handling section of the review, and both guns do come with a two-stage adjustable trigger, which once again we'll talk a bit more about when we get to the handling section of the video. At the rear of the action you can see both rifles do have the same automatic safety as what you get on the Cometa 300, which you know we was a big fan about, but again you know we'll talk a bit more about that as we go on. Moving further along, you can see the ultra short carbine has checkering on the side where the full length rifle does not. Now the ultra short carbine is more expensive. The other reason for that is, as you may have noticed, the stocks are a slightly different color to each other. And that is because the ultra short carbine has a walnut stock, whereas the Fenix 400 is your sort of more traditional beach. That being said, I will say this, the beach on the Cometas do has a, have a very lovely finish on them. Hopefully you can see the grain sort of poking through back here with maybe a little bit of oil something like that you could really bring that out to be a real eye catcher but i think when it comes to the looks competition i think the uh, ultra short carbine is probably winning this one moving slightly further along you do on the fenix 400 get a full set of fiber optic sights hopefully you can see them glowing there on the foresight and on the rear sight here whereas the ultra short carbine you do not however the ultra short carbine claws it back you can see the much shorter barrel length in comparison to the 400 um, it does claw it back with the fact that you do get a silencer, and unlike a lot of the budget gear out there, this silencer can be removed. We're also going to test the um, overall efficiency of the silencer. We'll have a few shots with it with the handling section and see what we think of it. And other than that, that for both these rifles is pretty much it. I mean, they've got a pretty nice spec list already. Automatic safety with the ultra short carbine, you have got that removable silencer. You've also got the walnut stock. And as with all of Cometa's products, thanks to ASI, they have a lifetime warranty. So this isn't a gun that you buy once and throw it in the trash. This is a gun that you keep, well, as the name implies, pretty much forever. Which again, I don't think can be understated just how fantastic that really is. So that's it for features. However, I wonder how heavy they are and if that short gun, if it really is that much lighter than the 400. Let's get the scales out and find out. We've got the Cometa Fenix 400 on the scales now, the big boy, and as you can see, she comes out at 7.24 pounds. So weight-wise, not too bad. It's not a heffalump, but it's not a lightweight either. It sits pretty much perfectly in that middle ground. So now let's get out the ultra short carbine and see how much of a difference there is. Okay, so we've got the ultra short carbine on the scales and oh my God, 666. <laughs> What's gonna to happen to me before this video is done? Yep, 6.66 pounds. So it's, I'd say, a lighter middleweight. If it, oh, there goes the battery. A lighter middleweight if it was a boxer. So let's put a scope on there now and see how both of them feel when they're put to the shoulder. Let's see what they're like. So then, the Cometa 400 Phoenix. What do we think? Well, we have got a Conus Pro 550 4 to 16 50 scope on there. We put a slightly bigger scope on here than what we'll see on the uh, ultra short carbine when we get to it because if you're gonna go target shooting, this could possibly be more of the sort of setup that you would use. Now, handling wise, let's, as we always do, start with balance. You can see there it's starting to tip back just a tiny bit. And she's pretty much spot on, if you can see that. Oh, the wind's starting to blow it down a tiny bit now, but she's pretty much spot on, which is nice. 
Let's bring it to the shoulder now. First thing I'm going to mention is that checkering is absolutely stunning. It really is. It's possibly, I'm going to upset a lot of people when I say this, but it might actually be deeper than what I felt on some of the Virox. That is really nicely done. Maybe a little bit up front would have been nice, but at the end of the day, you can't win everything, can you? You can't, can't have it all. It comes up to the shoulder really, really well. And you can hold that really quite still as well. Obviously, that's mainly to do with the balancing and such like that. So let's see what it's like to cock. Now, ooh, ooh, that was nice. Now, you know with some of the guns that we've tested on this channel, you've got to give the barrel a little tap to unlock it. That was so smooth, there was almost no resistance at the top of the barrel there when before we brought it down. That was absolutely lovely. And this, just like a lot of the other Cometas, uses the ball bearing detent, so I imagine it's going to be very smooth to bring back up as well. So let's put one down the spout. Oh, that butter. Um, what I will mention, and I'm sure you guys have already thought of this, I knew it was coming, it does have a lump of plastic on the end. Now, it's not too bad. Um, it's not like with, I might have mentioned it already, but like the Remingtons and such are some of the cheaper gear where they put this great big plastic lump on the end, like a plastic brick. Um, you know, I wish manufacturers would stop doing this, but it's not too bad on this. It's not too, if I bring it back into camera, hopefully you can see that, it's not too garish. Um, another nice feature is the hooded foresight. That little hooded insert, apologies if you can't see this, it's a long gun, it's hard to keep it in frame, but that's metal which is really nice. A lot of these are plastic, but let's see what it's like to fire. So you can see, we mentioned earlier, it's got an automatic safety, which is engaged now. Simply push that forwards to disengage. If you want to bring it back on, pull it back. This is one of my favorite safeties on the market today because of just how easy it is to use. I mean, when you're shouldering the gun, your thumb is just three inches away from it anyway. You can just pop and you're ready to go. Lovely for if you're out hunting. So let's get a feel for this trigger, which is plastic, and have a little play and see what we think. That's not bad. This gun hasn't had sod all shots from it. I mean, I'm talking, we took it out of the box. I think we had about five, then put it back in and said, yeah, we'll review that one. The trigger pull on it is nice. You could see there, I'll do it again so you can have a look. Hang on, let's just take a see here at the cocking. Oh, that's good. You know, I get too excited over this. But no, it is a lovely thing and it's a smooth action to use um, when it comes to breaking the barrel. Put another one down there, close her up. Now the trigger, it is a plastic affair, as is the trigger guard. I wish that they would just use metal and I can't understand why. And Cometa's not the only manufacturer that does this, there's quite a few. You'll buy the cheaper version, it'll have a metal trigger and metal trigger guard. You buy the more expensive version and it's plastic. <laughs> I, I, I don't see the point, um, but let's have a go. So we've got first stage here, oh, take the safety off, that usually helps. First stage, little bit of tiny, little bit of creep maybe. That right there, if you can see that, is second stage. And now we just go, and off she goes. It's tame to shoot as well. There's a tiny little bit of vertical movement when you're firing, as expected with the spring gun. There's no nasty side to side movement, nothing like that. And the other thing that I really like, and bear in mind we're in a barn. I mean, you can probably hear my voice echoing, but have a little listen. I have to change my seating position ever so slightly. Have a little listen, I've got the lapel mic just here, and you know this is very, very sensitive, this lapel mic. Tell me if you can hear any twang. Turn the safety off helps. Nothing, let's do that once more because we hit a piece of tin. It's funny, I'm probably better shot shooting sideways like that than what I am shooting forwards, we'll find out later, won't we? But, here we go, aiming down, have a listen, safety off. Have a listen to this. Almost zero twang. It's just, and off it goes. That is fantastic. And the guys at ASI, I apologize if I've already mentioned this in the previous video. The guys at ASI said themselves that they don't like twangy springers. So when they were speaking to Cometa, Cometa, Cometa? When he was speaking to those guys, the lovely Spanish guys over there, he said, look, I don't like twangy spring guns. Can you do something about that? And so far, that's pretty much three out of three with almost no twang whatsoever. So we're on a bloody good run with that. But overall, handling wise, I'm a happy chappy. The trigger, like I said, you've got first stage, second stage. There's, it feels not gritty, it's hard to explain. It's not unpleasant, but there's a tiny little bit of movement with the first stage, but then you feel that, that brick wall of a second stage there. And when I say brick wall, 
having another go. You can tell I'm enjoying myself when I keep going. When I say brick wall, I don't mean it's heavy. I mean, it's just a very positive second stage. In fact, hopefully I might be able to show you. If you can see my little finger there. So you got nothing. Second stage. Off she goes. Lovely, fantastic. Will it threaten a record trigger? Not at the minute. Um, it's Again, it's an adjustable unit. I'm sure you might even be able to adjust that little tiny little bit of, not notchiness, but tiny little bit of roughness out of it. You might have seen it there when we was pulling it through. But to be fair, it's lovely and light straight out the box. I'm pretty happy with it as it is. So that's the Cometa, the big boy 400 done. Let's get short stuff out and see what we think of that. Okay then, so ultra short carbine handling, what do we think of it? Well, first thing I'm gonna mention is you're gonna notice we're in a slightly different area today. Uh, I hear at Big Dan's we don't know the meaning of the word continuity. Um, that's because they've put a load of farming implements where I usually film. Well, I'm genuinely believing that I'm getting pushed out of this. Uh, the other thing is the lighting is terrible and the simple reason for that is because the lighting is frankly terrible. Believe it or not, this is summertime still. But ultra short carbine, what do we think? Well, balance-wise, it has shifted slightly to the rear. You can see here, it's still falling back. I mean, we have got a smaller scope on here, the little Conus Pro T30, but it's, I don't know, it's not too bad, actually. It's come back a tiny little bit. You can see it's trying to nosedive now. It's pretty much almost dead center, but it's definitely a smidge further back. Um, that little scope as well just belongs on this little gun, doesn't it? But overall, it's a nicely balanced gun. The other thing I'm gonna mention is the checkering is lovely on this. It's not just there to look at. You can really feel this. You can feel it digging into your fingers. It's gonna give you traction. Let's now have a look and see what it's like to cock. Now, right, bear in mind, this gun is advertised as full power. And hopefully if you can see that, that is quite a short barrel on this. Let's see how easy this is to cock. See, I'm not even gonna pretend that I didn't know that was gonna happen because I had a few shots with this. Curiosity got the better of me and I was already stunned just how easy that was to cock. And that lovely clunk when you return that barrel as well is so solid, it's beautiful. Yeah, that is a, apparently, we gotta see if there's any tricks on the go. We gotta get to the chronograph section, but apparently these are full power guns and you just saw how easy I cocked that. I cocked that easier than what we usually did with the, even the XS19, the Sabres, which are full length barrels on them. That I did without any tapping, nothing like that. I don't know what they've got going on here, unless they're cheating with the spring. That is beautiful. But we got the same automatic safety as you get with the 400. Just give that a push forwards to disengage. And let's see what we think of the recoil and trigger. So let's take aim at something. Right, it's the, well, it's the same unit. It's very similar, obviously, to the 400. You get to the second stage, you've got a tiny little bit of almost like a gritty creep, but I'm talking a millimeter of travel if that. I'll show you the little finger test. And then off she goes. Now what I will say is the pull weight is nice and light. It's not like a lot of budget triggers and such out there where you've got that nasty sort of long pull or it's a bit vague. It is consistent. Let's whack that safety off. So you're not catching me out this time. All right, so there you've got second stage. And if you watch, if, if you can see my finger, you'll see there's a tiny little bit of movement there and then off she goes. There's a tiny little bit of movement, a little bit of creep in the second stage, but it does seem to be very consistent each time. So I would say that is a lovely trigger. What I wouldn't say was lovely about it is the fact they bloody keep making them plastic with plastic trigger guards. I know I may have had a moan when I had the 400, but it's worth moaning about twice. Imagine that brass with a lovely brass metal trigger. How lovely would that little gun look? And it would just feel so sweet to use. It's a nice unit anyway, but for the love of God, please stop putting plastic triggers on guns. If it's a budget gun, fair enough, but these aren't really what I'd consider budget budget. You could have had metal on here. We picked on the Narika Storm and such for this. I'm doing it the same with this. What I'll say, it's not quite record unit via our trigger standards, but it's really not far off. If someone out there is a tinkerer that would just maybe file down those trigger sears a tiny bit, just smoothen them out, you would have an absolutely wonderful trigger. The other thing I'm gonna mention, which is nice, is this, this silencer is removable. And on top of that, if you can hear this, she's also metal as well. You've got no plastic on the end here, nothing like that. So again, it's more expensive, but it's not anything like this Remington Sabres and such, where you've got a bloody glob of plastic on the end. No offense to the Sabre. I love the Sabre, but if you could have put a silencer like that on there, it would have been such a lovely gun. Handling wise, I'm a very, very happy chappy. Let's just give that one more go. 
And what we're going to do now as well is I want you guys to listen because a common thing we've noticed with these cometas, meters, however you say it, meters, is listen to how little twang there is. All right, so it's right up against that lapel mic. So if anything, it's going to be louder than what you hear actually in person. You tell me. We'll have two shots. You tell me if you can hear any twang. Nothing there. Let's try one more time. You'll get a very slight reverberation off the spring, but that's it. You just get a ping. Have another listen. It's a boof and a ping. That is bloody sweet. It really is. No real twang. Again, I think this is the fourth, well, including the 400, the fourth Cometa we've shot, which had very little spring noise whatsoever. Again, Cometa, keep it up. That's fantastic. But overall handling wise, I am a very, very happy chappy with the little ultra short carbine. The recoil on this, it's a little bit more than what you get with the 400. You've got a lot less weight on the front end. Obviously, it's not as much to absorb it. But saying that, it'll be interesting when we get to the accuracy section of this review, it'll be interesting to see if the lack of weight makes it less accurate or if the shorter barrel will mean the lock time is obviously going to be quicker because the pellet's got less barrel to go through before that recoil really starts kicking in. So that I'm very much so looking forward to, but safety off always helps. Yeah, that recoil is lovely. It's just up, down, that's it, job done. It's still not even really a, a harsh kicking gun. But that's it for handling. Otherwise you, you can tell I'm enjoying myself by how much I'm talking about it. That's it for handling. Let's move on now to quantograph testing and let's see if they're cheating with the power on this and that's why that thing behaves like it does. Cometa, we've got our eyes on you. Right, so chronograph testing time. As you can see, we're gonna be using the Air Arms Diablo Field 16 grain pellets. The chronograph is ready to rock and roll. We've got the phone here, but it will be plugged in at the time and you'll see a live reading as to what each shot is doing straight through the phone. We'll have the camera staring at that. Now, first rifle we're gonna use is, let's do Fat Boy first. Let's do it that way. Fat Boy, then Ultra Short Carbine. So these rifles have not even been close to running, um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna do 20 shots. We're gonna look for, as we always say, consistency, power, and well, I was going to say shot count, but obviously it's a spring gun, isn't it? So we've got no shot count to test. Thank God for that. So after that, we're going to, later on in this review, we're going to put a few shots through the guns again, just to see roughly what you can expect when the rifles have calmed down just that little bit more. So we're going to do two chrono readings over the course of this one review. So that's it for our little uh, talk down of the chronograph testing. Now I better actually uh, shut my mouth and get to work. Okay then, so consistency testing, what do we think? Well, as you can see up the top there, this was the Cometa Fenix 400, the full length uh, bad boy with the Air Arms 16 grain pellets. As you can see, consistency is pretty damn good. That's a spread of 15 FPS. We did have one rather smoky shot, if I remember rightly. It was I think it was the 11 point, yeah, here it is, the 11.83. And then you can see where it cleared itself a bit, she came out at 11.38. So I'd say when we put a few pellets through it down range, after we've done the um, accuracy test segment, when we do the second chrono, I reckon we're probably realistically going to be looking a bit closer at the 11.38 foot-pounds mark. But again, I would obviously still consider that absolutely full power. Um, it's quite refreshing actually to get a gun sent to us that's full power, that is literally full power straight out of the box. The biggest surprise, however, was the Ultra Short Carbine, as you can see the title up there. This, you want to talk full power, this is full power. I mean, Jesus Christ, I think we did have one at 11.99 feet pounds. Where is it? It's here somewhere. There he is, shot 13, if you can see that, 11.99. Now, it was smoking more so than the 
um, Fenix 400, the standard rifle. Again, it might just be an effect of that shorter barrel. I'm just seeing more of it as it comes through. It's got less of a distance to travel. But I'm, well, I'm still figuring out how they made it so easy to cock, considering that it is definitely a full power gun. Um, one thing I will say, you might have noticed the lighting was slightly different when we did the Kometa um, Ultra Short Carbine video. And the reason for that is, if I bring the camera up, you can pretty much see the light was at the time cutting directly across the table. You can see it sort of, we have moved since, obviously I've come back, but you can see it's sort of catching the chronograph now. And I don't know if I mentioned it on the review or not, when we did the M25 video, the light was sort of cutting across and we had some really crazy readings um, on the go there. But now we've had a move, no issues at all as far as I can see. And consistency wise, it's actually pretty bloody good for a gun that's not had many pellets through it at all. Spread 13 FPS. Yeah, uh, will we get into single digits when it's had a few more pellets through it? That's what I want to see. If we can get it, say, 9, 7, something like that, FPS with 20 shots through it, I will be a seriously happy chappy. So far, these guns have put a massive grin on my face. I don't want to say too much because they could be absolute pants down range. I highly doubt that because of the barrel they come with, that cold hammer forge unit. But we'll see. You never know. You can get a duff barrel, I suppose, and anything. But that's enough of chronograph testing. Let's set some targets up. I'm going to do some shots off screen to get them zeroed in, so I can guarantee you they're not going to be zeroed at the moment. And we're going to see just what they can do down range. We'll go 25 yards, then we'll go 35 yards. The problem that we've got, unfortunately, that bloody blue trailer has come back. So 40 yards. I'll see if I can rig something up. I don't know, but we'll see what happens. But overall, that's the consistency test done. Let's move on to accuracy testing. Okay, so that's chronograph testing out of the way, and we're now moving on to accuracy testing. We're going to be using the Milbro cards as per usual. You can see the target is set up downrange. Unfortunately, what you can also probably see is that the wind today is absolutely freaking atrocious. Uh, there you go, if I just pan it across there, you can see basically, perfectly, all the way down our range, it's blowing like mad. Um, Unfortunately, I can't really wait any more days to get this done. Uh, as you know, it's been a long time since we did our 300 review and then building up to this one. Reason for that is obviously other commitments, but on top of this, we have been trying to find a good day to get this done. If it's not been windy, it's been raining. If it's not been raining, it's been thunderstorming. So we don't want to keep you guys and girls waiting any longer for any other potential guns you want to see us review. So this has got to be done today, which is really unfair on both guns, to be perfectly honest, because I was so looking forward to seeing what they could do in perfect conditions. And what I will do is we'll put it on the end of another video. When we get a nice calm day, we'll actually have a few shots in the field with these two or either one of them, whichever you guys would like to see the most, where we can stretch their legs and take some better shots. But I mean, just look at this. But we want to get a review and a re review we will have done. So we're going to get the targets and everything set up. You can see there's a piece of card in there already. This is the 25 yard mark. I mean, we had to come back a little bit because you can see the gaping hole in the floor here. If you can, if that's coming out on camera and the table is just wobbling all over the place, but we just call it 25. 25 yard mark, we can have a few shots. And then if we can, if it's worth it, we will try 40 yards. But I mean, just look at the trees down there. Anyways, that's enough waffling on. Let's do some accuracy testing. As we usually do, and have a few shots off camera, see which pellets I like the most. Then we'll switch that camera on and see what we can do down range. So back in a bit. Okay, guys and girls, just thought I'd show you this really quickly. Usually, or well, we don't seem to do this anymore to keep the video short, but I've got to do this considering the wind is still crappy, to be brutally honest. Um, and I might not get these results. Again, simple as, and it is a bit unfair on the guns. This here is for the ultra short carbine. This was the first zeroing test we did. First shots went left. You can see here left. Then we had two roughly in the same hole. After that, we adjusted right. One shot got skied. Could be me. Could be the weather, could be the gun. I'm probably going to say it's a mixture of me and the weather. After that, one shot going left. Then we've got three in one cluster here and another two in this little cluster here. If I get this five pence piece, you can see there, that's pretty much five pence group already, even in this wind. Whether I got lucky, I don't know. After this, we adjusted again. You can see one shot still slightly left and then we basically went straight through the bullseye. So she's definitely zeroed in. Very impressed with that, but it gets even better. After that, and this is with hobbies, after this, we got the Fenix 400. And the first tin that we tried was the exact RS Jumbo. Check this out. Now, let me pull that down a bit because it's covering up a little hole and I don't want to do that. Right, first shot, left. After this, we adjusted right a bit. And you can see here, we have got 
I don't know if that's three or four shots in that little hole there, and one off to the right. Again, bear in mind the wind, and five pence group. A little tufty bit coming out the right side, maybe. Oh, there we go. After this, obviously adjusted down, we had one shot went off. Again, probably wind or me. Another one slightly off, wind or me, but then look at this. Five pence group. Then we adjust it again. Obviously we want it near the ball if we can. We've got one shot left. Other than that, five pence group. Now, <laughs> I'm gonna keep it quick because obviously we want to do the proper accuracy bit and get it on camera. If I fluff it on this, I am never gonna live this down. And do you know the absolute best bit? We usually rest on a backpack or a rifle rest. The backpack, I've not even picked it up. It's still just sat there. You can see it's not moved. The zip's still open. You can see our testing hawk scope tucked in there as well. If I fluff this, I am not going to forgive myself, but let's get the camera now set up. We put a fresh card in. I'm going to get the camera set up, 25 yard mark. Do you know what? I know usually we do do it rested and maybe we should today to help it because we need as much help as we can with this wind, but I think we're going to shoot it offhand. We're not going to use a rest with these. Bugger it, they're spring guns. In my eyes, they're designed to be shot offhand, simple as. So we're going to get the target put in there now and have a few shots at 25 yards. And then after that, see what we think. So let's get the accuracy testing done. Okay then, so accuracy testing out of the way. The wind is, as you can see, absolutely no better than what it was before and during our shots. But saying that, both guns, I think, did incredibly well. Now this is shooting without the rest. You can see, not being touched, still sat there the exact way it was. Uh, yeah, this is both shots, or, or both groups being done without using a rest. We had one wicked flyer with the ultra short carbine going way off. Uh, grouping wise, I'm pretty damn impressed with that. Considering the wind, we've got, looks like three through that hole there. It's a little bit flappy there. Um, if I turn it upside down, you can actually see why. I think the main thing that's happened, because usually flatheads make nice, neat little holes. If you look here, it almost looks like the pellet has hit the wood and tried coming through this side, or at least a piece of it has. So I think that's why we've got that tear. Uh, but overall, that is very, very impressive. If I put the five pence, you can see she is a five pence group, except that one. Moving further along, we have the Fenix 400. Now let's see how the Cold Hammer Forge Barrel did on this. Not quite so great. Probably mainly due to the weather. It could be due to me. Maybe where I've been shooting the 400, I was a little bit off shooting, uh, the Ultra Short Carbine, sorry. I was a little bit off shooting the 400. But even so, you can see you've got two shots here. Looks like another two shots here, then one and one. Five pence up. It's not gonna be covered by the five pence piece. Considering the conditions, that is a 20 pence group. I'm not complaining at all. I still think the gun has done incredibly well considering what we've had to deal with. And we've got that one low shot left down here. So we've had one flyer with each group. Again, the, the grouping on this did open up a little bit, but I think that's still perfectly acceptable. I'll put it this way. You could have pretty much any gun you could think of and bring it around the farm today and you're gonna, you won't get that much better than that. I, I, I'll say that. I'm an owner of a 97 and a HW80 and I genuinely think that these would put both of them well and truly through their paces. I mean, especially the ultra short carbine and considering, again, I hate to keep mentioning it, but it, it's not great today, I'll put it that way, but we have to get this review done. But accuracy wise, I'm a very, very happy chappy at 25. This is gonna be really bad because of the weather, but I'm gonna take it to 35-ish out there. We're gonna move the target back. We're gonna have a few more shots. I might bring the rest out for this maybe to eliminate those little flyers in case it was me but to be fair it's not going to be pretty simply because of the atmosphere today but we'll do some 35 yard shots and see how we get on so let's do a bit more shooting
Okay, so there's our Dora the Explorer backpack rest. What do we think of our shots at 35-ish yards? Well, it was predictably erratic, is what I would say, but I'd still say better than I expected. My question is, these are the hobbies with the ultra short carbine. My question is that these shots here, did they, or these two, is that two pellets in one hole? Or is that just one pellet that maybe went in just a little bit funky, maybe got turned by the wind or something like that? Because it looks to me bigger than these. I mean, I was gonna write it off. In fact, I will write it off as a complete miss. Let's say it's gone down here or something like that. But it just looks bigger than me than the others. But even so, we've got our five pence piece of truth. Let's have a look. They're around a five pence group, but not really. We're sort of lying to each other here. It would be, a, I'd imagine, a little bit bigger than a 20 pence group with that one going off and potentially one missing. Again, could be me, could be the gun. What I will report is, to me, it didn't feel that happy being shot off the rest. It was a little bit bouncy, more so than when you shoot it off hand. Again, could be the rest isn't really a proper rest, not suitable for it, I don't know, but that's that was my finding anyway. It was a little bit talky, perhaps, a little bit bouncy. With the 400, however, things were a bit better. Maybe the weight was helping it. The interesting thing is our flyers all went to the left, so I don't know if maybe you know there's an opening down there, unless the wind's changed and it's coming through like that, I don't know. But better. We've got the five pence piece here. 20 pence, the main cluster there. We had one going high. I know the wind, like I said, if it has changed or not, it's kind of hard to see at the moment, to be honest. But. We had one going high, one going way left. That could have been me, it could have been the pellets, who knows, but much better. Definitely much better. I, hate, I know I keep bringing it up, this must be the 50th time, but it's hard to put into words how miserable the wind is today. It's not shooting weather at all, but that's genuinely not too bad, 35 yards off the rest. So that's our uh, accuracy testing done. Let's now move on to chronograph testing, or our second chrono test, and see what we think of these guns once they've been running just a tiny little bit more. And with the final chronograph test out the way, we move on to our final verdict. But first off, about those chrono results. How do, they, how do they stack up to when we first tested the guns? Well, this is the first result that we had with the Fenix 400. You can see the rifle had an average velocity of 570.55 feet per second, standard deviation 3.7 per shot, and a spread of 15 FPS. Not bad, for out the box, those numbers are pretty damn good. You can see it's definitely healthy, maybe a little bit too healthy with a shot there coming out at 11.83 feet pounds. But other than that, you can't complain. Also, I hope that you can hear there is a Spitfire flying around here. I've got my lapel mics on. If I see him, he's getting really close. Sorry to get sidetracked, where is he? There he is. Whoa, listen to that. Anyways, <laughs> what was we doing? Oh, reviewing guns, that's the one. Um, yeah, but out of the box it had pretty good numbers. You can see here it was pretty healthy, a bit too healthy in some areas, but other than that, not too bad at all. So after that, we then did the second shot string, as you can see here. We're doing it in pictures mode. It's because basically it'd be easy in having to sieve through other chronograph results to find it. So unfortunately though, that does mean we can't scroll up and down. We had one error with this shot 12, but we have a spread of 13. So the spread is definitely coming down. And on top of that, the power has also settled ever so slightly. Average feet per second is now 567. So the rifle is burning off a little bit more of that grease and you can see it's starting to settle down. With the ultra short carbine, the first group that we had is this one here where the rifle was punching very high. 1183, 1199, which is, the, the limit is the limit. It's not a goal here in the UK. 12 feet pounds is the most we're allowed. So that was a little bit frightening, but it was smoking a hell of a lot, which can be seen with our final shot string, which you can see here. The power has settled down really nicely. 
She's averaging now 557 FPS, whereas before it was 574. And it's just a much more settled in rifle. It's still smoking a little bit. We still get the occasional spiking shot, but other than that, it's relaxed itself really nicely. So power wise and consistency wise, she's doing bloody good. Consistency with this has gone from 15 FPS up to 15 FPS from 13. It's sort of in that awkward sort of running in period at this moment in time. It's still puffing a bit, but it's running a lot cleaner. So when it's had more shots through it, I know that's gonna settle. Accuracy wise, <laughs> the wind, absolutely on point at this moment in time uh, the accuracy wise 25 yards both guns considering the conditions did exceptionally well you can see we had one fly just off to the right here but the main group here this is with the ultra short carbine using hobbies the main group sits under a five pence piece if i can just drag that back a little bit there's no complaints there one flyer could be me could be the gun now bear in mind at the 25 yard ish marker we was firing at i was doing it off the palm without a rest the Fenix 500, 400, not 500, that one's, well, they haven't invented a 500 yet, I'll put it that way. The 400 wasn't quite as great, but still pretty impressive. The main group would almost fit under a five pence piece with one little flyer going off. Again, the wind has been coming from behind me. It's been coming straight at me. It's been all over the place today. It's not really a fair test of either one of their accuracy, but I mean, we're doing a gun review. We've got to shoot them, haven't we? Uh, moving on next, we did our 35-ish yards test. You can see here, this is the ultra short carbine using hobbies. The groups did open up quite a bit. It's probably around a 20 pence grouping. We had that one flyer because it's Big Dan's air guns and apparently, uh, well, I'm very consistent in my inconsistency, shall we say. We've got the cluster would almost, I'd say, fit under a 20 pence piece, which again, at 35 yards, this was off the rest, admittedly, but 35 yards of a rest in these conditions is really not too bad at all, it's got to be said. And as we go back now to the Fenix 400, accuracy is pretty good. I mean, there's quite a fair chunk of it will fit under that five pence piece. We've got one shot going high, one shot going left, and this is with the JSB Exact Jumbo RS pellet. So accuracy wise, it's pretty good. So you know what we say now, it's who are these guns going to suit? Who are they not going to suit? And also, what do we like and what don't we like? Well, accuracy, from what we could see, considering every single card is stacked against them, accuracy, I'm going to give an A plus at this moment in time. That's not a permanent A plus because we need to do another video with these when we've actually got summertime weather. I kid you not, this is July at this moment in time. Uh, but when we get some actual calm weather, we're going to do some shooting again, see what they can really do. But considering those conditions, I mean, we're stacking them at 25 yards with the ultra short carbine. And again, we're almost doing the same thing with this. I, I've, I've thrown the zero cards, which might have been stupid. I said I wasn't going to use them, but even with the zeroing, you could see what the guns were trying to do. 35 yards, I think, in these conditions was a little bit silly, but we promised we'd do it for you. So we did it just to have a little look. But even so, not bad. We had almost a cluster going here with the ultra short carbine and we did have a bit of a cluster going with the Fenix 400. I think that the ultra short carbine is basically, it's a hunting rifle. It's light, it's pointable, it's powerful is the other main thing and it's bloody accurate to go with it. It handles beautifully and even the triggers on these are nice. They are plastic, which is a negative. I don't care what gun it is. It could be a Virarc, a Cometa, even some of the SMKs we've shot unless it's very cheap. If it's a gun at the price point these are at, it needs a metal trigger unit. Simple as, no excuses. But handling wise, they are nice. And that unit is also very nice as well. You can see hopefully just shining through there, the adjustment screw, they are an adjustable unit as well. But they're not record unit levels, but they're really, really not far behind is what I'll say about that. When it comes to shot cycle, the ultra short carbine is feels a little bit snappier than the 400 and that is simply because of you are missing a chunk of weight on the end uh, the silencer does add a little bit on there but it's not the chunkiest silencer on the planet it does do a good job i mean silencers on spring guns do you really need them at sub 12 feet pounds i don't know to be brutally honest but it does definitely there's not much muzzle report comes out of that and massive bonus points because it is metal there is not any plastic on that silencer at least not from what i can see the Fenix 400 I find more of the target gun. It's a bit heavier, it's a bit bigger. Off of a rest, it's a lot more calm. I mean, the ultra short carbine wasn't bad, but you can tell it wasn't as comfortable as what the big 400 was. 
it's going to stack pellets indoor range outdoor if you've got actual shooting conditions unlike we have here today it will stack pellets all day long and again the trigger is the same as the ultra short carbine it definitely does the job you've also got that beautiful cold hammer forge barrel on there which so far hasn't let us down once and we haven't been dealing with Cometa for very long uh, and I've pinged a few of our customers messages through just to see how they're getting on with them. I like to hear feedback if I can and I have not had a single complaint about accuracy whatsoever. So I think we're on to a very good thing with these and again considering how much cheaper they are to some of the premium gear out there I think you could be in for a very good thing with them too. That's pretty much it to be fair. I mean I'm, I'm smitten as I'm sure you can tell. The little things, like I said, they we couldn't really get a fair test of accuracy today, but from what I saw was good. Consistency is good. The finish on them as well, for considering that both of these are sub £400. I mean, we could even probably chuck these scopes on there for sub £400. And you've got beautiful checkering. You really have. Yes, the 400 is missing some. It would be nice if it had some up here, but the checkering that you have on this might actually be deeper than what you have on the Ultra Short Carbine. And this is deep enough anyway. You can hopefully... That comes up on camera it's a lovely bit of attention to detail but i am a very happy chappy oh one thing i missed cometa please take these off of these these guns put put that on there put the silencer on there get rid of this lump of plastic I'm, i can almost guarantee it does nothing yes you need to put that sight on there but ah, just find a better way of doing it Overall, I'm a very, very, very happy chappy. And to top it all off, if you decide to go with either one of these guns, thanks to ASI, who are a lovely bunch of guys and girls, they really are, you get a, a lifetime warranty with them as well. So a lot of the premium brands, you might get a year, maybe two if you're lucky. With these, it's a literal gun for life. And from what I've heard and seen so far, the way they're built internally, which we might have a look at one day, it's not gonna go wrong anytime soon. I'll put it that way, they're a lovely made gun. And don't just take my word for it, look at some of the online reviews and things like that. They are genuinely, they punch well up. And that is what we love on this channel. We love guns that are slightly cheaper than the main gear, but they can take the fight to the big guys. Anyways, we're rambling now. We're gonna shut this one off. We've had a, a double whammy review, hopefully to make up for the time that we've taken. And again, I'm so, so sorry that it has taken this long from the 300 review to get a new review out. It's the weather mainly this is why we're doing it today because we have to uh the weather and other little things come up but next up we have got the big boy the fusion is getting a look at so thank you ever so much for watching our review i'm so sorry it took so long if you ever have any questions or if you'd be interested in the cometa orion please do get in touch with us at bigdansairguns.co.uk not only do we sell air rifles but we also test them before you take them home so you know you're getting a good one thanks ever so much for watching and as always take care Okay, so you may notice the slightly stranger camera angle on this little extra final segment we've decided to chuck in. That's because we've got a hat camera mount, so you're actually basically seeing more or less almost what I'm seeing at this moment in time. Now, what we have is we've got a tin of RWS Super Points, we have the Kometa Ultra Short Compact, and we also have a rather uniquely placed shoe, if you can see that. So, let's see what we can do with that freestanding. Get more of these superfields.